once again we are we are on your tv set again this is this generation show we have coconut grove who sponsor us uh, every day they give us beautiful venue to have our program and then we also look up to you for you to come and sponsor us our doors are open anyone who wish to come and sponsor us you can feel free call us on the number displayed on your TV set. My name is Auntie Rome, and today what I want you to understand is that you are a child that God has created you for. Whilst you are in the house, try to do your best. This is the time that you can be independent. You can be of yourself. Try to learn by yourself. Be a good child. Be a, an obedient child to your parent. Don't give them stress. Let them have stress free so that they can take care of you. We'll go for a short break and we will come back. Hello, lovely viewers. My name is Doris Babanao, a student of SIA Sumni International Academy, Dominion Overall. Keep watching this generation. This generation, we are inspired. Bye bye. Are you looking for a convenient way to get all the latest news and your favorite shows everywhere you go? Then the FD Mobile app is here for you. To watch FD Mobile, follow the instructions below. Go to Google Play Store and search FD Mobile. Tap on Install. Launch the app after installation. In the window that appears, tap on Don't have an account? Register here to begin sign-up process. Enter the required details. And don't forget to tick I'm not a robot. Tap on register to complete registration. Registration is completed. Enter your username and password and tap on signing. Tap on GNTV Junior to start viewing your favorite shows. FD Mobile, TV anytime, anywhere. watching this generation show on GNTV Junior. Today with me, I have Mr. Benjamin Odro Ahen Junior. Uncle, you are welcome. Thank you. I hope everything is well with you. By Jehovah's grace, I'm good. Okay. He's from a University of Ghana. University of Education. Okay. Uh, uh, he's a lecturer in uh, Institute of Distance and E-Learning or visual learning. And I have with me here, Auntie Ekuya Apraku. She's a sweet mother. She has handsome four boys. Yes. He is also a CEO of Anoma Global. Okay, so they are here with me. We are going to talk more, think through what we need to know on e-learning and the impact for the children. So. Let's start from Mr. Bin Binoska. I'm telling you. <laughs> what is e-learning? Okay, right. So basically, e-learning is um, different from conventional learning, where conventional, we all know, you get up in the morning, you prepare to go to school, and then a teacher comes in to teach you, do all the works, and then the corrections are made, and then you go back home. But with e-learning, you need not to be in uniform. You are at home, and then you access the system on the internet. So based on what the school decides or what you want to learn, there are schools that direct you to a specific website or on your own, you can scout or browse the net and then find out what you want to learn. And that is basically e-learning. But we have different types of e-learning. We have ones that are app-based or web-based. And there's one that we call uh, LMS, which is learning man management systems. Okay. And that is more into details. Auntie Akuya, so you have been experiencing it. How, how is it? Is it, how do you cope with it? Because you work as well. 
<laughs> and the children are in the house. Well, this impact of COVID-19 has really turned a lot of people's lives upside down, especially as parents. Yet, e-learning does have its place. And in times like this, when we do have to exercise social distancing to protect us as individuals from the community, then it's important that we are able to continue to learn and protect ourselves. Uh, as a parent, it's been challenging. Uh, one thing is, when it comes to e-learning, you are talking about different tools to access the learning. Uh, when you are a student and you're learning, you need your eyes, your ears, and focus. Yeah. You are in the presence of your teacher. But if you are going to take on e-learning, you will need the tools to access the net, exactly. whether it be uh, a router, a mobile Wi-Fi device, a phone that has the capacity or the capabilities to give you access to the internet or whatever tools that would be used to provide that learning. It has been a challenge as a parent to provide the environment and all the different tools that are needed. Um, also, time is a factor. I have three children at three different class levels mm -hmm. and they each need support. It is unfortunate, but some, some things are getting involved. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping that this impact is temporary and I am pleased that the faculty at my children's school is continuing to find solutions and uh, my own efforts professionally is looking to help support them. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Ahen, yep. um, who qualifies to be a, an e-learner? Okay. Does uh, everybody have the right to be an e-learner? Because I can't give my phone to my child. <laughs> YouTube is there. He, yeah. he can go there. Okay. So, um, everybody qualifies. Just like uh, my sister, uh, as we are talking about, uh, it's, it's basically if you have the means to access the internet. And if you want to use a mobile phone for a child, I believe we do have what we call parental controls on a mobile phone. So all that you need to do as a mother is to put that system in place. You can restrict the applications that the child will access, will have an access to on the phone. For example, if it's a, a, a laptop, you can still do the same thing that child, a child will not be able to have access to uh, content which are not provided for children. So all that you need to do is you, the parent, must have the know-how. If you don't, you have to seek help so that you'll be in a better place to help your child access the system and to access the contents they are supposed to have access to. It isn't that we will be at home without learning, but rather be playing. And so it's open to all. You see, like the crutch, for instance, yep. they need more of practical things to learn. But with this e-learning, this is an electronic something, how, how are they coping? How, okay. Or how should parents in the house do it? Okay. All right. So um, when we talk about um, crutch and all that you're discussing, there are uh, different types of educational curriculum. For example, if you come to Ghana, we have the Ghana Education Curriculum. And in that system, there are learning objectives. And every learning objective has got what we call teaching materials. So for example, uh, my school, we, we prepare a lesson plan and send it to, to parents. So the parents have a preview of what we're going to do the following week. Basically, we don't look at anything tough, but home available materials that the children can make use of it. According to um, philosophers, we've known that children below the from the ages of zero to three, learning they learn by what you call it, concrete, touching things and feeling. So you get to another level where you now begin to appreciate things abstractively. The place where parents come in is where the teacher is now on the internet. He's only doing what we call virtual, like explaining the things. But it's up to the parent to be able to guide the child because the teacher wouldn't be there to be able to see what's going on. So what you have to do as a parent is, one, follow the lesson plan, two, get the needed materials that the lesson plan is providing, and three, also try and then understand what is being taught. Because if you don't place yourself as a teacher at home, you will not be able to help your child assess the system. Besides KG, junior high schools, there are other programs. We have IB, International Baccalaureate programs, which takes a different approach, but this time it's a student-centered learning 
where the teacher is playing a role of facilitator, just like a, a mother playing at home. You provide an environment where the children themselves comes out with what they know. And then when you get to know, then you help them to sort out because they will tell you a whole lot of things. And then you direct them and you prop their mind to be able to come out with the things you've stated in your lesson plans so that they follow your objectives. If there are certain things they don't know, that's when you, the teacher, will now help them to find out. And then you help them to draw a conclusion and then you give them an action task. Apart from IB, we have the Montessori system where it also has been structured for KG, grade one, grade two, up to grade 12 and all that. And then also it also comes with lesson plans. And all the parents need to do is follow the lesson plans, try and then learn the songs, the, the resources that we're going to use to be able to communicate what you have to learn for the day. So at these times, parents are really, really, really going to play a major role. Major role. A major role. I think so. We are still discussing on e-learning or virtual learning, a way forward for our children, how our parents are playing a role as a teacher in the house and then uh, as parents also. So now they are doubling up in the house. So Auntie Equia, way forward, is it stressful in the house with the children? Because you have to divide your time. Because this is KG1, class two or class five, GSS3 or something, you, you have to divide yourself. How do you go about it? Well, this is why I think as a parent, we should, as parents, we should always celebrate our educators. Yeah. The work that they do uh, is, is priceless. The impact they have on our children's lives is priceless. Uh, my experience with this matter is personal because I have four children. But also is professional. Uh, at, uh, if you come to my business website on themanglobal.com, you can see the work we're doing, the corporate social responsibility work we're doing to promote access to coding and online learning for children. Mm -hmm. uh, for parents, if you're looking to expose yourself to coding and programming learning, uh, you can also come to our website and find something that fits for you. I think what we should look at is why. The question is the why. Why is this important? And as parents, uh, I accept that this is the challenge. The one thing that gives me solace and peace is that I know the ends shall justify the means. Yes. So what has happened is a reflection of what is happening in the world and what the future is for our children. This is the future. E-learning is here to stay. And so what does that mean for the average Ghanaian child? Are we well prepared for this future? As parents, do we have the tools? Yeah. Are we making the right investments? Should we think about, hey, where we live, maybe we don't have to live so close because now our children have this type of access to this type of education. Which means that the professions that our children will have access to will also shift and change. And maybe it won't be such a typical road for our children to find a way to make a living for themselves. The world is opening up now. And so I, I'm hoping that that is what parents take away, that they don't despair with the understanding that now I have to become a stay-at-home teacher. Mm -hmm. I think as a parent myself, my experience has been e-learning doesn't only happen when my child is sitting in front of a screen. Thank you so much. You are still watching this generation show and then we are also discussing on e-learning and virtual learning the way forward we'll talk more about those who are in the remote areas what should we do amanti rome will be right back
welcome back this is auntie rome you are still watching this generation show i'm here with uncle Be binoska <laughs> auntie Ekuya, welcome back okay so let's talk about those in the remote area we are also going to write the same pc with those in accra okay. let's take it like my hometown mm -hmm. the internet is not all that it's not all that good it's not stable okay so how do i do it okay good so basically uh we i believe we do have what we call internet cafes mm -hmm. and with the content that is provided on e-learning it comes in two types there's one that we call them work sheet or workbook if it has been compiled in the book but if it's not it's a sheet like you're holding in your hand so with worksheet, you try and go to an internet cafe and then download them onto your pen drive or any retrievable device that you may have. So you come home and then you work on them. What I think community can, can also try to do if the network is not very good is to try and look for what we call network boosters. So communities can link up with the assemblymen in remote areas and try and get network boosters so that the signal strength will, could be, uh, what do you call it, and heightened so that they can be able to use it. And beyond that too, what people have to try to do on their own is to try and get uh, the syllabus for the particular courses that you're learning. For example, the BEC that you spoke about. If you have the syllabus, you have your textbooks at home, you may still, you can still learn on your own. Okay, thank you so much. Auntie Pia, now, Uncle was saying that we should download it. We can go to the internet cafe. Mm -hmm. Now, I have downloaded it. Mm -hmm. What should I do? I'm a mother. I'm, I'm not really an educated person. Mm -hmm. What should I do? As a mother, don't take that sense that you cannot support your child. Okay. In every family, there's something we call first generation. Your child now has access to education that you didn't have access to at that age. So now your child can also have access and utilize other people in their network. Sometimes in rural areas, you may not have so many people around you. You may have your traditional leader. You may have those who come in and out of your community. Don't fret and feel that you cannot lean on them and reach out to them. And the last thing on that is, now as a parent, you have a second chance. You now have access to the education now that you didn't have access to before. So sometimes when you partner with your child in learning, you will see that you inspire them to go even further. Good. Thank you so much. Uncle, so now e-learning, mm -hmm. e what if it come to stay? Should it be an option? People have done e-learning even before COVID-19, okay. okay? And it has come to stay and it will be, be with us forever because it is something that eases our movement. You know, going to normal school, you have to get up early in the morning. Some parents suffer so much. Children don't even have enough sleep because they have to sleep early and have at least eight hours of rest. So you have to wait, wake up a child like 3 a.m., take their shower, eat, put on their clothes, drive through traffic, and then drop them, and you have to rush back to your office before it is 7 or 8. And then when they close at 2 or 3, you still have to rush back to come and pick them. So if you can have all these systems, organize your children in places with their laptops or mobile phones, and then you monitor them steady, it would have been wonderful. So we should all try and make use of it because it's something that is going to help us, our movement, help our traffic, congestion, and help us even social distancing ourselves, but at the same time, learning and working. Do we have enough uh, trained teachers who can really do this work? Because it just hit us all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. All right. So with that, uh, trained teachers basically were trained on the conventional systems. Whilst these things are coming, we try to do in-service training. We try to train teachers before they can also have the knowledge to be able to impact children. At the same time, the unfortunate aspect about parents and students because we didn't know that this is going to happen, so we're not pre-informed. But if there are schools that already have this system in place, yeah. doing vacation classes, you are directed to go to a particular website, maybe a school website system, that you access it and study on your own during vacation. 
All right, so that system is there. The unfortunate aspect is how to teach children to be able to assess the system. That is what some schools were not able to do, but for our side, we tried as much as we could to help both students and parents. Okay, thank you so much. So, Auntie we are now, uh, we are back. I mean, let's say we are back from the COVID-19, and then we've gone back to a normal school. Uh, should, do you think that it should be an optional, because now we have been uh, used to the e-learning, should it be an optional so that it can be of help to parents in the house? I think this question is, uh, a bridge, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it type of question, because uh, yes, there are pros and cons to every change you would want to implement into your system, or a, a change you would want to introduce your system. And what I will say is for some parents they will find that this setup doesn't work for me. Yeah. And the children prefer to stay at home with me and we can learn on our own pace at our own level that works for our family. Uh, what I will say is we, whatever happens in the future, if children go back to school and they are comfortable. The one thing I would say is do not forget the E part of the learning. Uh, the passion that I have is giving access to coding programs for children because you have traditional learning systems where you learn your English, your math, and your science. But the way the world is moving forward, we know that technology is the future. And so e-learning, you can add it to whatever traditional learning you are already exposed to. And as I said, I will share our website with you uh, so that parents can go and see what opportunities their children can take on to expand what opportunities they can have in their careers in the future. Okay, so thank you so much. Uncle, so um, you've been an education uh, what what time do you think is best for children is it because the children watching uh they are not few are ss okay most watching as a primary jss okay uh -huh. so what time because on the timetable i can see 10 p.m i can see 11. Okay. what time do you think is appropriate for children okay the best time for a child to study is when they've had good rest. Okay. So if that child could sleep and wake up at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. and will have a sound mind, good rest, have food to eat, and be able to sit and settle to study, that's the best time. Because on the conventional system where children are, I mean, it's a learned behavior. You know, the conventional system, nobody, no, you, if you realize that, Sometimes in the morning when you want to wake up your children to go to school, they protest. I don't want to go. I don't want to do it. Sometimes they cry. You leave yeah. them in school and they'll be crying to go back home. Right. So the best time is when the child is of sound mind and you, the parent, will have to be doing what we call conditioning learning. Be conditioning them to learn that these are the things you need to do. These are the steps you need to take. For example, uh, I know of a, a student like uh, that's the, the teachers were finding it difficult on before special education came, children with special needs, okay? Parents were teaching their children with special needs at home because that time we didn't have special education, but now we do. So still, all parents need to do is try as much as possible, study your child, know the best time they can study. If they want to play, help them to play and help them to learn, else, it will be the same system where they'll be protesting, even in classroom, in a normal classroom. Some students wouldn't study. They'll be breaking up and down and be wiring around whilst others are trying to study. So study your child and find the best time for them. Okay, study your child and find the best time for them. So this is this generation show, and I'm here with wonderful people. We are giving views on e-learning or virtual learning, the way forward for the children in the house. It is me, Auntie Rosemary. We are going for a commercial break. We'll be right back.
Welcome, this is This Generation Show. We are still talking about e-learning and virtual learning way forward. At Equia, we've talked more. I want you to give an advice to parents, to children, and everyone. So what's your advice? My advice is, parents, children, this is your opportunity. This is your time. Take the time to expose yourself to the wonderful things that e-learning and the wonderful opportunities that e-learning can provide for you. I'll give one example shortly. Do you know that gamification, making games, is a way that children in the world today can make a career for themselves? If you are a child and you love to play games, there is a way for you to make a living out of it. And parents, you can allow them to do it and make them proud. And so what I would say is, as a fellow parent and a fellow partner in this situation, let us be excited by this as an opportunity. And as I said, you can go to our website, anomaglobal.com, to see the different opportunities that you can find for your children to be exposed to coding programs, things that can take them beyond the traditional learning systems. And if you would like, you can call us at 059-124-9521. Thank you. You have advertised on our show. Okay, <laughs> Uncle, your, ad your advice for children, parents, and then everyone. Okay. All right. So basically, uh, e-learning, which is electronic learning or internet learning, uh, comes with lots of responsibilities in terms of internet. What um, parents or government, especially the Ministry of Education, can do is to give uh, parents and teachers what we call zero rating for a specific application that a school wants to adapt. If a school wants to use a virtual learning of Zoom classroom, they can be able to zone schools into a particular area and give them zero rating, which simply means even if you don't have internet credit on your phone, you don't have data on your phone, you can access the system for free so that it cuts down costs. That is for the Ministry of Education. And what uh, individual organization can also do is to try and help parents, teachers acquire laptops and very good mobile phones so that together we can all learn. And for students, staying at home doesn't mean playing. Listen and we'll go to Anoma. Uh, dot com, right, Anoma Global, and assess their system, learn how to code, because artificial intelligence has come to stay, and it's only through coding that you can be able to benefit. And so stay at home, focus on your career, which will teach you how to become a successful person in future, but think of business, because artificial intelligence has also come to stay. And this is Binoska, I'm telling you, be your best. Children, Uncle is saying that we should be our best. Let's try and do our best for the nation, for ourselves, for our parents to be proud of us. This is This Generation Show. We have FD Mobile, they sponsor us every time. We have Coconut Grove, they also sponsor us every time. We look forward for your sponsorship. You can call us on the number displayed on your television set. You can call us. <laughs> 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 